think what people appreciate at the end of the year is, you know, they haven't had a simple, simplistic version of 1916 reinforced. They've got a greater appreciation of the complexity, not just of the rise in, but of the society uh, itself. And I think that could only uh, be a good thing. is obviously that pivotal moment in 20th century Irish history. It's the moment when nationalist ambition, aspiration shifts from the idea of home rule for Ireland to full independence. It doesn't happen immediately, it happens over time, but that's a significance. Um, it's something we would always have understood. I would have grown up in the 1970s and 80s where 1916 was a core element of a history curriculum which really would have been focused on constitutional issues and the relationship between um, this island and the neighbouring island, where social history was very much to the background, wasn't foregrounded. So 1916 was central to all of that. And yet, I suppose, growing up, there was very little commemoration of 1916. The 1970s, 80s, the backdrop was one of the Northern Ireland Troubles. Uh, and even in 1991, which was the 75th anniversary, I would have been in, in the middle year of an undergraduate degree in UCD uh, in history and politics. And even there, uh, it was conspicuous uh, by its absence. There was no great visibility around uh, 1916. Historians were quiet on the issue. Broadcasters were quiet on the issue. Indeed, the only programme I recollect from that period was a Today Tonight programme, which I think was titled Who Fears to Speak of 1916, where the discussion was inevitably around issues of democratic legitimacy, issues of mandates. Um, and of course, that entire debate was framed by reference to Northern Ireland. Is what happened in 1916, um, uh, was it legitimate and does it give succour um, uh, to, uh, to the Republican movement in Northern Ireland? That was the climate of the time. Very, very different to now, very, very different even to 2006 as well. Commemoration is obviously bound up with the politics of the present. It always is, and it's no different this time. If you look at the various strands of the Ireland 2016 programme, they emphasise, emphasise ideas around reconciliation. Now, I'm not sure how much uh, an event as divisive as 1916 can foster reconciliation, but the commemoration can also, uh, can also refocus an interest in the history of the time as well. And I think that is what, is what has happened in 2016. It has been made possible, as I said, by the public investment in archives, in records. It's been made possible by the engagement of the academic community, academic history community. It's been made possible by the work of national cultural institutions and others as well. Um, the, own pr the project I'm involved in, Century Ireland, had a very, very clear idea of what we wanted to do for the decade of centenaries, of which 1916 is obviously a, a key moment. When we envisaged the project, it was as an online historical newspaper um, in which we would set the grand narratives of the decade. So, the foundation of the volunteers, the Home Rule Movement, Ulster Resistance, 1916, the push to independence, partition, um, to set those big political narratives against the backdrop of people's everyday experiences. So to bring forth, what was it like to live in 1916? What was it like to, to work, to play, to socialise? All of those issues we try to give expression through that kind of newspaper format and to bring forward um, uh, bring to the fore, I suppose, historians and research which probably wouldn't have found an area otherwise. And I think that's been one of the striking features of the current commemoration. People have an interest in the society in which 1916, uh, in which the rising took place as well. Um, and I think also uh, one of the ideas behind the Central Ireland project was, uh, and the newspaper format, was, I suppose, to guard against the, this idea that historical outcomes are somehow inevitable. Uh, Ronald Fanning, in his book The Fatal Path, 
quotes a German historian who says it is the duty of the historian to give to the past the open future it once had. And it's a wonderful phrase. It's a wonderful phrase and that we should never assume that partition was inevitable. We should never assume that the rising itself was inevitable. If you look at late July 1914, within a, uh, a f just a fortnight before Britain declares war on Germany, um, all the major political leaders, the king, uh, are locked in a discussion in Buckingham Palace on the future of Ireland, how to resolve the crisis uh, over, over home rule and Ulster opposition. opposition. Early 1916, yes, we know the IRB are planning 1916, but nobody has an idea that the event would take place in the manner in which it did, or that it would lead to the transformation of the political landscape that did occur. Well, I think in 2013-2014, there was an awful lot of apprehension about how 1916 would be actually commemorated. I think there was a concern in some quarters that uh, it wouldn't do justice to the historical significance of the event. Or second, that actually whatever commemoration took place wouldn't be appropriate. And of course, there's any number of ideas of what constitutes appropriate. I think personally, what we got was bigger, bolder and better than anything uh, we could have envisaged. And that's because there was a serious level of public engagement. I think uh, the Ireland 2016 banner was important in providing an umbrella in which all of these events could be gathered. So people knew what was happening. An awful lot of those events that were gathered under that umbrella were already planned and taking place anyway. The national cultural institutions had planned their digitization projects, had planned their exhibitions. But when everything was gathered uh, under the umbrella of Ireland 2016, you were just struck by the scale and by the diversity of the events. I think the role of RTE here is important as well. And often, while universities have played a remarkably positive and constructive role uh, in it, RTE provides the bridge between that academic community and the wider public. And you see that in the audiences for an awful lot of the television documentaries. You see it particularly in the public engagement, the turnout, both in April 2015 for the Road to the Rising event and the near 300, three quarters of a million people who turned out on Easter Monday. And yes, some of those people are turning out for the sunshine and for the family events, but even without them, nearly all of those talks, which cover everything from sport to medicine to housing to the politics, of the rising, uh, nearly all of those were oversubscribed. Uh, there are queues around the corner for talks, which if they took place in a lecture theatre in a university, may attract a crowd of only about 20. The success of the commemorative programme didn't occur by accident. It occurred because there was planning, because there was deep thought and consideration that went into it, and because there was actually public funding, both for history, for archives, and for events, to showcase an awful lot of that, you know? And I think what people appreciate at the end of the year is, you know, they haven't had a simple, simplistic version of 1916 reinforced. They've got a greater appreciation of the complexity, not just of the rising, but of the society uh, itself. And I think that could only uh, be a good thing. I think there's a number of things that happen, obviously, um, in there. I think the, the, the involvement of primary schools was really important. I think the Proclamation Day would have been the standout uh, event there because it got school children, uh, primary school children thinking critically about the society in which they live uh, uh, in themselves, you know. Um, it wasn't just dusting down the proclamation and reading it. It was getting them uh, critically thinking about the society, uh, as I said, in which they lived in and which they would like to see. Uh, I think the president um, of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, uh, clearly had given an awful lot of thought to his role in the events and he was very much to the fore of an awful lot of the commemorative ceremonies. Um, but he gave an awful lot of really good speeches. I think the most important one was he called for, um, I suppose, the same sort of critical uh, assessment of the imperialist military tradition as we've already had over the last 20, 30 years for the Republican uh, physical force tradition. I think that was kind of a really important um, uh, statement to make.
Thank you.